Hi there, Karen Flaherty from Living by Human Design. Hope you're doing well. In today's Human Design Weather, we're going to be talking about the Gate 15, which is uh, typically called the Love of Humanity or the Gate of Extremes. So we've got the Sun in Gate 15, which started uh, June 19th, right around midday. It goes until June 25th, and the Earth is in Gate 10, which is the Gate of Self-Love. So these gates always kind of run together because they've got the, um, so we've got the 15 here coming off the bottom of the G center. And then we've got the 10 coming off the side of the G, G center. And uh, the 10 and the 15 are always, you know, pretty much combined together. And, um, and they're two of the love gates. And so they create the vessel of love for this, for anybody born this week. I have a great niece who was born last uh, June 21st. And so she'll just be having a first birthday. So she's a vessel of love. Um, and uh, most people who were born this week would be the vessel of love. So, but um, they have the sun, sun in the gate 15. Uh, so that's the love of humanity and the gate of extremes as well. And then the, the, 10 is the gate of self-love. So it's about self-love. And then once you love yourself, you can then empower others. So it's very much a um, empowering, very empowering kind of energy. So we started this week with two centers defined, actually, with the the uh, throat again defined and the uh, solar plexus from last week because, because the 35 was defined. And now it's, uh, well, after tomorrow, it won't be. So that goes away, and then we're basically left with no definition for a few days. And then um, by uh, the 24th, we move into having the gate three in the north node here, and then that connects to the 60, which is still in Pluto. So uh, for a while, actually, we're going to have this sacral energy defined as well as the root energy defined, and that actually goes until August 26th. So that's a long time, so from uh, June 24th till August 26th. So just about two months. So it'll be uh, for any people who are not sacral beings. So those would be the projectors, the reflectors, and the manifestors. Mm -hmm. It's going to feel like you do have sacral energy for a while and um, through most of the summer, actually. So if you feel like uh, getting out and doing all those summer activities that you don't usually do, this would be a time to do them. So we've got that gate 15, which is the love of humanity. It's also called modesty or extremes in the original I Ching. Um, and the, the reason it's, well, part of the reason it's extremes is that the other half of it is the gate five, which is the gate of rhythms. So the gate five is all about rhythms and patterns and staying in a position that uh, keeps you in um, a, a schedule, basically. The 15 is not, it's the opposite. And so that's why we call it the gate of extremes. Um, it's the quality of behavior, which expresses the proper balance between extremes. And and so this the five and the 15 are um, unique in that they're the gates. Um, and I'll just go back to this for a second. The 15 is here and the five is here off the sacral. And together they create this channel that is the channel of, it's the channel of rhythms. So, so you put the, the five and 15 together and we get the channel of rhythms, right? And this channel is one that occurs in all um, animals and plants and humans. Everything on the planet has this 515 in it. It's in some way. And so it allows us to be in the, in the flow, in the rhythm, in the pattern that works for your particular body or plant or animal, um, whatever it is. And so this is why we call it extremes. It's because we can go from one, from, from the patterns to the extremes. We're, we're basically, we can balance it out, but, but we always have to go back to the pattern at some point, but we can deal with the extremes. If you have to get on a plane at you know, if you've been up all night working on something and you have to get on a plane at six o'clock in the morning and then give the presentation and then come back uh, the same night, that's kind of an extreme schedule, right? Most people wouldn't want to do that, but you can do that. And so the thing is you can do that, get a good night's sleep and then come back and do it again or hopefully wait a few days and then do it again. Um, but the thing is we can be in extremes. We can be in extreme weather. We can be in extreme circumstances. We can be in, in extreme um, emotional situations with people. We can be in all kinds of extremes. And yet we, we have the resilience to bounce back. 
we have the resilience to get back to the pattern and be be okay with that and survive and not only survive, but thrive. So the incarnation crosses this week are the cross of the vessel of love, uh, the cross of extremes and prevention. And in quantum human design, we call this one compassion. We'll talk more about that in the next slide. Um, the gate 10 is all about self-love and it's about, uh, it's called treading or behavior of the self in the original I Ching. The behavior of the self being that we love ourselves, that we are here to like and love ourselves. Um, it, he, they say it's the underlying code of behavior, which ensures successful interaction despite circumstances. So no matter what, you love yourself. No matter what, you're on your team. No matter what, you understand that you're doing the best you can and that that's going to be good enough um, and, and probably even better than good enough. Um, in the Gene Keys, uh, it's called self-obsession is the shadow. Naturalness is the gift. And then being, just being, is the CD. In quantum human design, it's called self-love. So in the Gene Key 15, um, we've got chat, the shadow is dullness. The In the repressive side, it's empty. Or in the reactive side, it's extremist. And the gift is magnetism. And the CD is fluorescence. Um, and this fluorescence is basically the flowering of you. It's it's about being fully present, fully you, fully flowered or blossom door, however you want to call it. Um, so in the graphic, Richard Rudd says, uh, to live closely to the earth's natural rhythms is to experience the wisdom and clarity that comes of moving more slowly through the world. So again, that, that rhythm is on one side in the gate five, but in the gene key 15, we've got the extremes. And so this allows us to be in the earth's natural rhythms because sometimes the natural rhythms are not so conducive to what we would really want to have there, right? So sometimes we do have to get up early and sometimes we do have to stay up late. And sometimes we don't have the foods that we want or the the drink that we want or the um, the things that would keep us healthy and thriving. And yet we're able to stay healthy despite those extremes. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there might be times when you can't get um, something that you're quite used to having, um, something that doesn't uh, feel good. And so we get out of sorts, right? We get out of, you know, our digestive system or our, you know, uh, sleeping patterns or um, something else that we kind of rely on on a daily basis or exercise gets out of, gets out of sync and it doesn't feel so great, but we're able to get back to feeling good again once we continue with our usual routines, whatever those are. The, the resiliency there, the, the being able to get back to the way we were, to be able to thrive and survive and to um, live in a way that feels good to us is what this is all about. That's what this Gene Key is all about. It's also about compassion. It's also about, uh, so besides the extremes, it's also about compassion. It's about the love of humanity. It's about really really having this deep understanding that we're all connected, that we're here for a reason. And that there, you know, those of us who actually have the, the gate or the gene key 15 in our charts just don't understand why there are wars. We don't understand why people can't get along. We don't understand why um, everybody can't just be working together and having a good time and thriving. Um, we don't get the competition of that. And so, the compassion is there for all the people in the world who don't have what we have or who have a you know, difficult time getting to eat or um, be safe or be able to do the things that they want to do in their lives. And so for the people who don't have that, we have compassion. And we have compassion for those people in different ways. So, you know, it might be actually helping them. It might be sending money. It might be um, praying for them. It might be, you know, uh, sending good thoughts. There are lots of different ways to show the compassion. And, and, and you know, just as many ways as there are people, really. Um, so the compassion can be shown in, in lots of different ways. Now, the dullness of this shadow is interesting because it's it has to do with the um boredom really in a way it's it's the repetitiveness of the stuff we have to do on a daily basis that creates the dullness so here richard says that the, um as a definition of dullness only the human neocortex makes dullness possible our attitude affects life's events 
experience mirrors attitude. Attitude is one of the great mysteries of life because its source is indefinable. And um, I used to have a um, one of the partners at my um, consulting firm used to have a big, you know, um, sign on his uh, in his office that said that just said attitude at the top, and then it had a, a description. And I, I don't think I have it anymore. But basically, said attitude is ninety percent of everything. Ten um, percent of life is the stuff that happens to you, and ninety percent of the other stuff is your attitude toward it. So the thing is, we can think of life as a lesson, or we can think of life as um, a, a uh, way for us to be victims. And if we're if we're ta- taking the attitude that life is 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 a lesson to be learned and and to to grow from, it's a lot different attitude than to be thought of as the victim all the time, right? And so um, we get to choose, and we get to choose our attitude every day. And, and with every circumstance and with every choice we make. So um, anyway, so that's the attitude, but this stillness is, is, is it's having a frustration around the repetitiveness of life. And what I've found is that when we have those repetitive things that we have to do in life, like the laundry, like the dishes, like the, you know, making the bed, like all that stuff, I use it as an opportunity to, um, to go inside and especially if I'm alone, just to, you know, it's basically a, a, a way to meditate. It's a time to meditate. It's a time to go inside and ask a question and, and um, figure out what the next step is. What's the next best thing I can do? Um, what, what's, um, you know, how can I make a difference today? What can, I, what can, what would be fun, right? What would be fun to do today? You can ask yourself any of those questions and you'll get an answer. And so that's, it's a fun, you know, and then it becomes a fun time to do those things, to do the dishes um, later at night, to, you know, to do the laundry when, whenever, um, and to, you know, because you know how to do those things. And same time, you know, same thing with driving, taking a long drive or even a short drive, just uh, commuting to work or something. Use that as a time to think and to be with yourself and to and to find a time or find a way to um, ask the questions that you want to ask that would make a difference in your life, because that will make a big difference in your attitude. So we have uh, a number of birthdays this week. Um, Prince William had a birthday. Um, so ironically, his father had the trooping of the colors, I think, over the weekend, <laughs> um, which is the birthday celebration for the king or the queen. Um, but Prince William was there too, and he's got a birthday this week. Um, Meryl Streep, Nicole Kidman, Alan Turing, the scientist, Carly Simon, George Orwell. Um, a lot of these people had um, big lives, Probably, you know, most of them in the cross of the vessel of love were were bringing something new to people, something different because the vessel of love is individual. Let's put it that way. It's a, it's an individual on all the love all the love gates, and so um, the um, people like Bob Fosse, who um, was uh, an amazing choreographer and and brought a number of of different musicals to Broadway. He had a different way of looking at things. Same, same with Joseph Papp. George Orwell came up with, um, you know, a really unique book in 1980 called 1984. Um, and uh, there are a lot of other Meryl Streep takes, you know, takes on many different roles, uh, many d- diverse roles, right? That allow her to become very good at her craft, and and yet very, um, you know, she's very much a mentor, very much a uh, somebody that people can turn to, and at as far as I understand, um, you know, one of the people that is a friend to a lot of other actors and actresses, which is not always the case. So anyway, um, hope you have a wonderful week. This is a week where we have the first days of summer or winter, depending on where you are on the planet. Um, it's uh, the for a lot of us, it's the beginning of summer and, and summer activities and things like that. Um, but it's a time of um, really kind of loving and nurturing and compassion. Um, um, there, there are also graduations and um, Father's Day just happened yesterday and a lot of other things are going on in this little um, time that we call the, the Sungate 1515 that are family oriented and nurturing and um, compassionate. 
So I hope that's the type of week you have. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Be well.